<laughs> Thanks, folks. Okay, our next um, speakers are uh, from the Uawa Nui Project, which is in Uawa in Tolaga Bay. Um, Alison Wado and Peter Hanford. Alison is the project coordinator. Uh, she's also a board chair for the Tolaga Bay Area School. Uh, and Peter Hanford is the project manager and he also owns his own business, Ground Truth, of which he's the CEO. So uh, welcome, both of you. Uh, come on up and um, as, you, as you like, whoever first. Um, and so if you've got a bit of room at the end, uh, people may like to ask questions, otherwise um, they can come and see you afterwards. So, great. Te tuatahi ngā mihi nui ki ngā tangata whenua o tēnei whenua. Koina, me... He mahinu ki ngā maunga, ngā awa, ngā moana, uh, i tēnei rohe. Uh, I te, te rua tahi, um, he mahi ki ngā kaimahi o uh, tēnei hui, uh, te pōutiri ao o tāne. He wariware ngā tangata te roto te ingoa ao o tāne. Uh, he mihi. Um, uh, ko anō he mihi nui ki a koutou katoa i tēnei rā. Te ora. Ko titi rangi te maunga, ko uawa nui, arua matua te awa, ko te aitanga hauiti i te iwi, ko Alison warua hau. Tēnā tātou katoa. Um, I'm Alison and um, I'm project coordinator for uawa nui. Um, I come from a small seaside settlement, 52 kilometres north of Tūranganui, Gisborne, uh, with a population of 800. 85% um, of them related to me directly, which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, now I'm going to tell you a bit of a story. Te radar, he likes stories, so I've got a bit of a story to tell you all. And I'll just move this over here. Um, so that you can get an idea of what Uawa Nui is and what it means to me and, and our, our people. Um, yeah. So I need to go back a few years to 1769, when Tupaya and Captain James Cook of the Endeavour sailed into our, um, in this small inlet between Paurewa and Hotiurangi, um, not far from a place called Uawa Nui Arua Matua, which they, James Cook and his people, renamed Tigadu or Tolaga Bay. I don't know where they got that from, but there you go, such is history. Um, where am I? Oh, anyway, our tipuna, Hini Matioro, a young and curious 16-year-old chieftain this, she was only young, um, she welcomed the crew of the strange waka into their lives. And uh, so that was the big beginning of our dual heritage and shared future with um, Ngatauriwi. Um, so to cut a really long story short, we'll now fast forward to 2012 and with the viewing of the transit of Venus, I don't know if you know about the transit of Venus, pretty cool thing that happens in the sky. Um, uh, yeah, which was one of the main reasons why Captain James Cook was navigating his way around the world. Um, this me meant hosting over 800 scientists, geologists, and every other ologist that ever was invented <laughs> Um, into, our, into our lives and into our small community. So with the help of all of our five working marae, all of our 800 iwi members, community, school, farming and forestry, we were able to feed, water, enlighten and ultimately have them fall in love with our tiny paradise. And of course, view the transit of Venus, which on cue after the national anthem was finished, the clouds parted and there it was, a really tiny black spot in the sky. Wow, <laughs> pretty cool. Some of our, my relations are like, well, is that it, cuz? <laughs> yeah, that's it. So now what? Well, after a quick hui with my principal and iwi members, as you do, we knew we had to maximise on having all of these really enlightened people in our rohe. So we had a chat with this uh, really cool guy, Sir Paul Callaghan, who um, has passed away now, but I'm sure he's um, watching and, and hearing everything that's going on. He's really awesome. Um, he 
we, we had to talk to him and um, asked him, you know, to help us to look at cleaning up our awa. Um, he said, how about we look at the whole catchment? And we were like, whoa, okay, how do we do this? What, what, what's involved? Um, so this is what we came up with. And I have to press this, don't I? Nope. That one. That one? Yep. yep. Okay. Our school and community were seeking professional advice and assistance on how to achieve the restoration at a meaningful level within our catchment. Um, with a combined environmental, economic and cultural restoration. The involvement of our schools, community and Te Aitanga Hauiti Iwi, the um, now disbanded Alan Wilson Centre, um, Ground Truth, um, all offering independent science and practical projects um, and the development of the Uawanui vision. Uh, connecting and involving our iwi went without saying. Um, as a hika, it is up to us who are at home to do the do, uh, while also keeping those whānau that live far away um, in the loop as well of what was going on in, in, in their rohe and with their marae. Uh, we consulted with our tamariki about what was important to them, and uh, so as a school we spent a lot of time talking with them about the importance of their world. Um, as you can see from these uh, high quality architectural drawings, the things that matter to them are our, our town, our awa and bay, growing kai at school and home, their whānau, pig hunting, jobs within the forestry industry, keeping out a marae in good condition, um, haka, waiata, surfing, sports, kaimwana, our farming industry, and of course having pretty pink hair. Um, getting a little bit technical now. Uh, knowing our geological catchment was also essential for, for the community to understand um, and how this related to the awa and what was coming off the land and ending up in our awa. Um, and learning how to begin to correct some of those um, imbalances. So by involving our iwi and community, well not really involving because we're just there. This, this is what we do. Um, all Māori community know that when you're there at home, you're the one who has to take the scones. You're the one who has to set up the marae for, the, for tangi. You, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and always at the forefront of this is our dual heritage and shared future, um, which was established in 1769 between our wahine tipuna hene matioro, Tupaya and Captain James Cook. Um, the environmental, economic and cultural rest rest restoration and with the shared vision and landmarks to guide our waka forward, our iwi and wider community will get there together because that's what it's all about. Also, by keeping the big pictures through our vision poster alive, this guides our actions on the ground. And just on that, all of the actions noted um, on the other side have already been achieved and continue through our Uawanui sustainability classes um, within our school and the cadetships uh, which we've set up. So our Uawanui um, is, is embedded into our curriculum. Um, so, you know, I take my hat off to our, um, our principal and our staff for um, being right on board with this kaupapa. Um, our, of course, our babies, um, you know, the year one and twos are not jumping in the river and um, searching for invertebrates or inangas eggs, but they do water testing, they plant trees, um, do plant and weed identification, and both schools are involved in planting trees around our rohe. Um, I'm not talking about a couple of hundred. Over the last two years, we have planted 25,000 trees, native trees. Um, so I'm really proud of that and proud of to be a part of it. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, as board chair, I'm really proud of that and the commitment that everyone has to it. Um, he manawa whenua, he oranga tangata. Healthy environment, healthy people with funding and support from institu institu institutions such as the Gisborne District Council, EIT, DOCS or Paul Callaghan, the now disbanded Alan Wilson Centre, Ground Truth, Te Pony Kōkiri, Ministry for the Environment, WWF, Massey and Otago University 
and of course Te Aitanga Haua Te Iwi, Te Kura Arohe o Uawa, um, Te Kura Kaupapa Māori o Māngatuna, E Tipu Kohanga Reo, Whānau Whānui Kohanga Reo, our farming and forestry and local businesses. Our work is ongoing and will continue, for it is not just for now. Um, it is for the economic, ecological, environmental and cultural sustainability for our iwi, our community, our people. Kia ora. Ko wainu i te maunga, ko waikana te awa, ko Peter Hanford ahau. Kia ora tato. Um, I have a tough act to follow um, with Alison, but I just really, I guess, thought I'd mainly just show you some pictures and just give a few kind of thoughts in terms of the, um, the experience I've had in terms of working um, with Te Aitanga Hawati um, on the Wawanui project and supporting them in that. So I think it's a really it's a really cool model in terms of, I guess I was thinking about it before, I think we've, um, a lot of ways, we sometimes we've just got in and done things um, and we've sort of, um, through working together, have, have sort of worked our way through things and, and have had less of a science approach in the development, even though there's been really key roles of science in particular places. But so I guess this is a theme that's, that's, um, that's come through a lot in terms of um, these presentations and things so far, is the significance of those relationships. So building those through the early stages of the project and developing that vision that, that Alison put up there has been critical and I think it, it always is in these projects. What's happening here? Just hang on a moment. It's not the way now. It's come back. Yep. So, and the other thing is um, that the the project and what it's achieving, Alison's already mentioned, that the, the cultural and the economic and those aspects of the whole project are, are, are critical and sometimes the biodiversity is is a, a happy outcome and an important part, but it's not always the driver. So it's been really important to understand um, all those aspects that are in there. And um, there's, I guess the positive thing from biodiversity point of view is that there is um, really interesting things left, um, and there are, although there's a lot of the native covers been lost, there is there's interesting, a range of remnants and there's potential. We've been, talking about this concept of an Uawa nature net, that sort of connectivity and the rejoining across that whole landscape. Um, one thing I didn't sort of explain, I think um, Alison put up some maps, but the, so this is um, Uawa Tolaga Bay here, and the Uawa catchment goes right up, um, sort of almost behind um, Tokamaru Bay. So it's about 50,000 hectare area is the sort of focus of the project. So again, just, I won't dwell on this, but, um, but that, in terms of a project like this, that sort of understanding the social and the biological side of that whole area is, is really critical to the scale you're working at and to the sort of things that you're working on. Um, and, and the drivers of that history is... Um, and I think, you know, when... Just sort of backing up what Alison said, if you read this statement down here, this is a, um, this is a direct qu quote from the um, crew of the Endeavour when they arrived... Um, at Uawa, Tolaga Bay, and hauled into um, Opatama um, Cook's Cove with the endeavour. And basically they, they identified, you can see there about the, the people being in this state of profound peace, um, intensive cultivations, um, high quality um, cultural you know, cloths and carvings and so on. So the thing that's often been fed back to me is that a lot of what the... the um, the vision behind this is, is really reachieving this in a in a modern day way. Um, so again, just the fundamental importance of, of values to driving this whole thing. I think that um, the yeah, it's just critical to the whole. I'm running out of time, am I? <laughs> so, I'll, so what I'll I'll just flick very quickly through a couple of pictures. I think so. Science. Just one comment to make there is that that I think. Science is about helping a community in an iwi like this achieve their vision. <coughs> Science isn't really the thing that, that um, determines what your vision is, because that's about, about values and so on. Um, 
So just some of the things that we're doing, um, which I think are quite cool in our, in our models for other areas, in terms of sustainable land management, we're working down from this whole catchment scale to working with, um, at a property level, in terms of looking at how we get that balance across biodiversity, um, economic, um, all those aspects. So that we're doing that work. All sorts of restoration projects underway, um, some fantastic work in history. This whole um, building capacity across the whole community is, is fundamental. Um, and that the link of the cultural, fantastic sort of redevelopment that Te Atanga Hawati are doing in terms of all of their um, cultural strength as well is critical. So again, education and involving kids has been really important. Um, just one last thing I would say about these, this is a, a group of kids, we took out um, counting birds, and so there's all sorts of integrating this into the, into the um, education classroom system. One of these guys, we're out there and we're walking uphill towards these, um, to the next bird count station, and he's like, oh, I hate this out here, it's terrible, I hate this, but it's heaps better than school. <laughs> so that's the kind of model that we want to create, I guess, really. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>